This is the next video in the Historic Ordnance series. Now before I get into this, I have to put out the warning. Do not attempt to make one of these or anything else from the Historic Ordnance series unless you are in a survival situation, unless you are in a resistance situation. Unless you have an invading force taking over your area or you are fighting an occupational force that is tyrannical rounding people up. If you make one of these at any other time using live materials, not just uh, making an inert example for display, you will get caught and you will go to jail for a very, very long time. Now, what is the piece of ordinance that I'm doing? According to the film, Viet Cong Mines and Booby Traps, which was made in 1967, I do have a copy of it uploaded into uh, my catalog of videos on YouTube and BitChute. This is referred to in that video as a nail pressure grenade mine. I did looks for photos on this. I could not find any good photos. I couldn't find any at all. The only thing I can find is that one video and the reference in there. It does not appear in any of the manuals or pu publications that came out in that area to talk to the troops, give them indicators and uh, a little bit of an idea of the booby traps they would find in the field. So this is probably something that was not all that common but this is something that's rather intriguing and I'd like to go over it. Now, what did the inside of this look like? Now, in case you didn't figure it out from looking at that little throw together example, this was done with a World War II era or type US Mark II fragmentation grenade, also known as the pineapple grenade. These had a TNT filler. They were produced up until 1960, according to uh, information on the internet. Now, all they did to create this mine, they first would remove the fuse body, this piece, and there's no cap on this one. This is a uh, expended trainer. They would unscrew this from the mine. Now, the TNT inside is cast, so you're going to have a pre-made cap well in there. You're going to have to, or they would have to, put in some type of detonator. Now, I looked and I looked and I looked and I could not find a reference to the exact detonator used on this. But looking at a newer addition or newer change to a mine countermine manual, that was done by the Marine Corps, a change that they did in it. I got somewhat of an idea on probably what they did on this. And looking at that manual, you know, kind of confirms the idea that I had. You would have a live, unexpended cartridge casing, which was probably a 5.56 millimeter for the M16. And you would have a non-electric blasting cap. How something like this probably was assembled, they would take one 5.56 casing, remove the projectile, pour the propellant into the blasting cap. They would take a second cartridge, remove the projectile, take the two, put, put them together. Why I think it was probably the 5.56 is the neck on that, I believe, is narrow enough to fit into the neck of the blasting cap so that the top of the blasting cap would go up the cartridge and then stop at the shoulder of the cartridge. So it would keep it from going down too far. In the marine manual, it actually showed what looked like a 30 caliber cartridge casing and the non-electric blasting cap was inserted into the neck on the 30 caliber cartridge casing. Which one did the Viet Cong use? We don't know. It's not in the publications, and I'm sure the, pe the person who uh, came across this mine is long since dead from old age by now. But after the two are lined up, put together, you're going to want to make sure it doesn't come apart. So they probably used, say, a little bit of tape or maybe a little bit of resin or some type of glue. 
it would not have been anything hot. So they would not have used solder or anything like that. They would not have crimped the two together because it probably wouldn't have worked. There's no way you'd be able to crimp the cartridge casing if you tried crimping the cap over it or vice versa. So then our uh, improvised detonator was probably put down into the mine. If need be, they probably had to remove just a little bit of TNT from the bottom to get it to go down in there. I don't know the uh, total length of how this would go together in comparison to that type of hand grenade. So once they had that down in there, they're going to have to add the plunger on the mine for the boot of that U.S. soldier or that Arvin soldier to step on to set this off. What did they use as a plunger? A nail. Now someone did make the comment on the Viet Cong foot mine video that nails are unreliable. You run the risk of just puncturing the, the primer instead of setting it off. Easy fix on that. Just round it out a little bit. Not a lot. You'd still want it to basically be a firing pin to set off the primer. Now this likely was set so that the end of this was right on the primer itself. Just sitting there. And then they'd have to fill in that space around it to stabilize it roughly in center or at least centered over the top of the homemade detonator. How would they do that? Well, we do know that the Viet Cong did melt down explosives from unexploded ordnance, from 500 pound drop bombs, artillery shells, whatever they got a hold of. They did perfect a way to melt that down in the jungle and then recast that TNT. We know they did use that in mines such as the DH-10. So it wouldn't take that much just a little bit of that molten TNT to get poured in around here and you stabilize that nail in place until that TNT cools and hardens. You then had your improvised pressure anti-personnel mine. Now, when I looked at the video, how this was put in the ground, they made a hole big enough for the grenade, slipped it down inside. The top of the ground came to about here. It was just over the top of the shoulder of the grenade body. So you had the dirt was at about this level. They then filled in the dirt around the top, stabilized it in the hole. So you had this much was sticking out of the ground, say inch and a half, two inches, give or take. And they would conceal this by putting leaves or grass over the top. Not a lot, just enough to conceal it. Something like this would be employed in an area that you could guarantee someone would walk through. Say, on the inside of a gate so that the Americans come through, entering the village, they're coming through that uh, perimeter fence of the village, open up the gate, walk inside, someone's probably going to step on that goddamn thing and they're going to lose their legs. Or at least that's the theory behind it. I cannot find information on this. I looked in... ATF publications, I looked in military publications, and the only reference I can find is that one training video, and that's the only photo I can find also. Now, if you like what I do in the Historic Ordnance series, come over to Player. There is a link in the description. Become a supporter. I do additional videos over there for my supporters only, talking about things like this and giving you the information that I don't put in my videos on YouTube and BitChute. Stuff that's a little bit spicier. So, you know, come over to Player, kick me that five bucks, that 10 bucks, or if you wanna really support the channel, the 25, become a supporter and you get spicier content than this each month. So there you go. The Viet Cong nail pressure grenade mine. Now, for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot Militia movements, always remember SAONs.